Good evening. Good evening. Wonderful to see everyone. I'm very excited to be here. In Casablanca, which I imagine some people have seen, Humphrey Bogart delivered a lot of classic lines in his portrayal of Rick Blaine, the wary owner of Rick's Cafe. The movie, of course, is set at the height of World War II, with the world convulsed in an existential fight, and Rick's character thinks he can be an island. He won't take sides, he doesn't address moral questions, he rejects any concept of an ethical obligation to help those desperate migrants who were trying to get out of Morocco. As he tells a pleading Ingrid Bergman in one of those unforgettable lines, I am the only cause I'm interested in. Now you might know Warner Brothers actually began producing that movie on December 9th, 1941, the day after the Pearl Harbor attack. And Rick pretty obviously embodied a strand of American isolationism, that rugged, amoral detachment which presumes it's often better to just leave the world's problems alone. Now, everyone on the internet, if you guys are ever on Twitter, they always say, like, no spoilers. Um, but I'm going to talk about what happens in the movie now. Is that okay? All right. It's 75 years old. Um, but the movie, of course, it portrays Rick's leave-me-alone attitude pretty sympathetically over time. But he only becomes the hero when he does grow beyond it, deciding that in his life, love and duty require more. And he risks everything, and he takes a side. And if you think about it, for a war movie, it's notable that when he does decide to intervene, it's not with violence, it's not on the battlefield. He intervenes by risking his own life with an act of compassion. He helps a resistance fighter who's trying to escape the Nazis as a refugee. And then he tells the love of his life that she should flee as well, because if she stayed, who knows the line? I know there's old people in here. <laughs> I know that. Uh, if she stayed, she would regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. And that's not a line you forget. And Rick's character was talking to her, his lover, but he was also, of course, addressing himself and the motivation he had to take an ethical action instead of regretting inaction forever. Now, just about every generation faces these kind of tests. And a lot of times, the arguments for inaction are cloaked in realism. Few tests, I think, are as dire or as stark as the question of what to do about child migrants, people whose lives hang in the balance for reasons that they have nothing to do with. 28 million children right now uprooted around the world is what makes today's child refugee crisis the worst since, yes, World War II. 60,000 children roughly arrive at the United States border alone. So these are dilemmas the United States has to face whether we think we want to choose to or not. And tonight we're here for the Coming Together for Children Alone event to honor people who are stepping up to this challenge, the advocates who personally represent them, humanitarians who support this work, and of course the children themselves who've met adversity. I think we agree with the kind of courage and dignity that sets an example for a lot of adults who may have never faced anything like what these young people face. With that in mind, to get us going, I want to turn now to a performance from a group of children who have been praised by Adele, Gaga, Oprah, Obama, Bloomberg, only praised by the one-namers. And you know how famous you have to be to go by one name. To introduce them, I want to add one other point of context. And I want to quote Kanye, also a one-namer. Quote, every time I say something that's extremely truthful out loud, it literally breaks the internet. It's a real quote. It may be an overstatement, 
but the children you're about to hear from have broken the internet. They release homemade music videos online, and they didn't draw an audience of one million, or five million, or 10 million. They've had over 60 million views for videos of them just singing. These are not, you know, high production. They come from a regular public school in Staten Island, PS22. They are led by a teacher, Greg Reinberg. They're in fifth grade. Please give them a warm, warm welcome. 